video is the first episode of a mini series. In this mini series, I'm going to show you how to apply continuous integration and continuous delivery principles to infrastructure as code. We're also going to see how to create artifacts with our infrastructure as code and how to deploy and how to test it. This is for more experienced Terraform users, so I won't touch on Terraform basics and some knowledge of what Terraform is and how it works, modules, variables, and all these things is a um, prerequisite. But if you're interested in a more um, uh, introduction um, course on Terraform, let me know down in the comments. I'll be happy to work on it. Hi, I'm Anto, and this is Auto DevOps, a YouTube channel for software engineers. If you are a software engineer and you like these topics, click on subscribe. If you think that just using Terraform is enough to say that you are doing infrastructure as code, I'm sorry, but you're wrong. The C in infrastructure as code indicates that we treat the infrastructure's code as any other application code. When we write application code, we follow a process and we apply a number of best practices, right? So we try to follow design patterns, but we also do code reviews, we do continuous integration, we apply testing at different levels, we do automated deployments, but instead with infrastructure as code, what I see most of the time is just two things. One is putting everything in source control, which is a good thing. And the other thing is doing code reviews, but reviewing the plan. Reviewing a Terraform plan is a good thing, but is probably not helping with the automation. And also in some cases, maybe too late. For me, it's a bit like reviewing a payment system by waiting for failed transactions. It's just that it may be too late. In addition, the plan is called by Terraform itself, speculative plan, because, because it returns what can potentially happen, but not what is going to happen necessarily, right? So, so doing this type of review, you will end up doing a style check that can be automated with the simple Terraform FMT. And in the end, you're going to probably look at the last line of your Terraform plan, looking for zero distracted elements, and you're going to be happy. So in this first video, we're going to see how to separate the configuration. So all the attributes of the resources from the code. So from the resources itself. Why we're going to do this is going to be clear in the next steps, but let's start with a practical example by looking, let's say we want to create a storage bucket. So what we can do, we can use one of the Google Terraform modules. There is one called Terraform Google Cloud Storage that is on GitHub. So the module is on GitHub. As you can see, this module has a readme with a list of inputs and instructions on how to use the, the module itself. There is also a folder with examples. And what we're going to do, we're going to try to create something like is created under this multiple buckets example. So when you open the main file, you can see that the module is invoked. And here we have a number of variables and the number of hard coded elements that are passed to the module. What we're going to do, we're going to try to move all this configuration in a single YAML file. So the first thing to do is we want to clone this module. I'm going to run this command. So we are cloning into a directory called modules and then Terraform Google Cloud Storage. So now this one cloned all the files from the module in our directory. So again, in the examples, if we open this file, we can see that there are all these elements coming partially from variables, partially are hard coded. So now that we cloned our module here, what we want to do, we want to invoke the module in a similar way that we have seen in the example, but instead we want to pass a single file. We want to do this because we want to externalize the configuration so that we can decouple the configuration from the code itself. And we are following something like the 12 factor app. If you don't know what the 12 factor app is, I'll leave the, the link down in the comment. It is a list of 12 uh, best practices for application development. So now if we go back to this, what we want to do, we want to create some sort of wrapper. So let's start from um, creating our input structure. So uh, I'm going to create a new folder under this that I call wrapper. And inside this, we're going to create a new file uh, that is going to be vars 
.tf. So now I'm going to copy and paste so we can focus on the code. So now this is a single variable that is of type object. So what we are doing here, we are using complex data structures in Terraform. Uh, there are a number of benefits that I will show you in a second. So essentially we are strongly, um, we are defining types for each one of the fields. And in some cases there are nested types, like you can see this one is a list of objects that contains other objects inside. So this is very similar to this. But now I'll show you what happens when we do everything in a single object and we create this type of structure. So what we want to do, we want to use a now a Terraform main file, main.tf. And this file contains the our new module which is essentially just a wrapper calling the Google Cloud storage. And as you can see, instead of passing, everything is populated using our new variable, which is the, the input variable. So now what we need to do, we need to invoke our wrapper. So we go under configuration, we create a new file, main.tf. And what we're gonna do is just something like this so we call our module um, the new one wrapper and we pass this local input now the local input needs to be defined as you can imagine so what we do we use a function from uh, terraform which is yaml decode so and we are saying that we expect a yaml an input.yaml file in the local folder and then we check if the file exists. If it exists, uh, we return, um, we pass it to, we pass its content to YAML decode and then into the local input. Now this file can be passed to the module. So now we have a module that can be invoked with, in this way. And the last thing we need to do is create our YAML file. So if we go here, we do new and then we do input.yaml. And in this, we're gonna paste this. So, as you can see now, our YAML file is matching the var file here, the same structure. Let me put side by side, let me see if we have enough space. So now we have project ID, prefix, names, and bucket only policies, folders, etc. right? So now, in this way, what we're doing is having everything in one file i want to show you a couple of benefits that you get from uh, from this so now if i do so let me export my google application credentials so now if we do terraform init first So this one downloaded all the dependencies. So now I can do Terraform plan. Let's see if everything went was fine with the code. Yes, so we are getting all our resources created from the YAML file. But what are the benefits of the YAML file? Let's try to change. Well, the benefits are not of the YAML file, but the benefits are more on uh, on the variables that is strongly typed now. So if I change something like this, I rename this in storage class. So it can happen that sometimes you don't pass the right values. So now Terraform plan will immediately tell us where the error is. So we have some sort of um, validation of our attributes. So as you can see, lifecycle, element zero, attribute action, attribute storage class is required. We changed the name to storage and this is invalid. So this is one, in one benefit 
of doing this but th there are more when we talk more about continuous integration and continuous delivery so now if i do telephone plan again this one should be okay so at this point i can apply and create our resources so now number of buckets with folders inside have been created so why we want to do this one example was the input validation but i think is also readability i found more easy to read and to manage when uh, you have uh, the, the the yaml file and this type of input the other reason is also because yaml can be easily generated by other components in your pipeline not necessarily yaml so the terraform provides another function which is json decode that you can use in exactly the same way but with json files and if you think json uh, you can immediately think uh, rest services that can generate Terraform configuration that can be injected into your pipeline. So to connect pieces of your pipeline, I think it's easier to use YAML or JSON. And with the next video, we're going to see how useful it is to have everything in one single file, because in the next video, what I'm going to show is how to seal what we have done today into an immutable artifacts using Docker. So instead of passing a number of variables, so in different ways, we can mount a single file in our container and have all the inputs in there. So if you have any question, comment down below and you can also find links in the description that you may find useful for this tutorial. Don't forget to like and subscribe and see you in the next video. Bye bye.